Huddle with Corporate Cars, delivering affordable, luxury European vehicles nationwide. On the Huddle this evening, it's Monday. Josie Pagani is with us. Hi, Josie. Hi, Larry. And a very good to talk to you. And Cameron Slater from Whale Oil. Hello, Cam. Hey, Larry. Cam, issue number one to you. This is Judge uh, Peter Boshia, who chairs the anti-violence campaign White Ribbon. He he is saying that the misogynistic attitudes of the group of young men, and we're talking about the roast busters and a lot of other stuff, of course, were endemic in New Zealand. Three and a half thousand convictions against men for assaults on women uh, a year. This is a very serious thing. 82,000 reports of family violence received each year. What do you make of it? Well, if anybody would know, it would be Judge Boshia. He has to see this every day almost in the courts, and that's just those who cross the criminal threshold. We have, and I wrote about this last week, and I, I, I bit my tongue and I held off and I held off, and then I wrote about the issue that we have in New Zealand where we enable these sorts of behaviours, even at a much lower level, where we have politicians, we have all blacks, we have uh, senior office holders in political parties, we have media commentators, we have media personalities and other famous people who treat women appallingly and get away with it. And we make excuses and we come up with all sorts of reasons as to why these things happen and we blame the victims. And so it should be no surprise to us, and the judge is telling us that, no surprise at all that young people in New Zealand who don't exhibit very much thought in in most things have learned to treat women so appallingly. And it is a shame. And it, and it comes back to a whole lot of things as well. We constantly talk about child abuse in New Zealand, yet we do nothing. And, we, and this was the fear last week when we spoke with Josie and, and yourself that we were going to talk a lot about this, but we were never going to do anything. And the judge is right, and it is a travesty. Josie, the, the scale of this, I think, is a national disgrace. Yeah, I agree, and, and I agree with everything you just said, Cam. I, the, the, the problem is, and the judge was talking about this before, actually the attitudes that somehow what the woman was wearing uh, was somehow complicit in, in them getting raped, what they were wearing, they were drunk. Um, the idea that, that rape can only happen in a dark alley at the hand of a stranger, these sorts of attitudes actually are widespread, and, and that's been the problem that I've been trying to confront over the weekend too by writing about this is that if the, if the attitude is widespread, I hear it you know, at the school gates, I hear it on the rugby sidelines, oh, you know, well, um, almost an attitude that rape isn't as bad as other crimes. You know, it's not, not as bad as getting beaten up or, or um, uh, I don't know, murdered. I mean, imagine if these young guys were going around killing people. You wouldn't have the police monitoring that. <laughs> You'd have them doing something. So I do think that that there's a sort of attitudinal thing that somehow rape isn't a real crime. You know, it's still out there, Larry, and that's yeah. the thing that we've got to confront. What about you, Cameron? Because I don't... I, look, I, I don't... Well, I, am I moving in the wrong circles? Because I don't... The circles that I move in, I, if anybody thought that rape, these sorts of attitudes, was OK, uh, they wouldn't be my friends. So I don't hear this sort of stuff. I don't think it's beyond belief that anyone would see this. But I think it's not that they're saying that, that, that... They wouldn't say that rape's OK. It's more subtle than that. And that what yeah. they're saying is things like, oh, well, these kids, these girls, they knew these guys. Why were they out there? Why did they go to their house? They knew what was going to happen. So there's, it's just... Well, yeah, it's again... I haven't heard that from any people that I talk to but I, because I think it's repugnant. Anyway, what do you say, Cam? Well, most rape occurs um, between known parties. Mm. Uh, it, it's not a random... You know, there, sure, there's ram, random assaults and rapes that happen on the streets, but most people know who their rapist is. The, the, but it's, it's not just rape. That's the, the far extreme of the misogynistic attitudes that exist. Mm. You know, some of the people who are sanctimoniously pointing their fingers need to look very, very closely at their own behaviour towards women. And it can be as simple as denying the paternity of a child, demanding DNA tests of children uh, that, you know, that, that people have said that you've fathered, um, being a deadbeat dad. Um, you know, those sorts of attitudes just are, you know, the, are the tip of the iceberg. There's one other thing here that, that, that's new, I think, Larry, in this whole debate, and 
it's the fact that we're in a whole new scary online world, and and this the and whole roastbusters thing is is a Facebook a Facebook phenomena, isn't it? Now, I mean, there's also sites like Omegle, which is one where you know you can a stranger can ask a kid questions, uh, a, a, you know, a young girl questions like you know when do you do you like do you, what do you like to do or something like that. It's horrible, and and I know that there are primary school mm. kids who go on these sites and they're getting abused simply by going on this site. Another one is Ask FM, where you you can oh, ask anonymous shocker, questions. Yeah. Right. So we're in a whole new world here, and I don't think we've really begun to understand how to the, deal with this. The thing is, it might be a whole new world, but these uh, attitudes have not bubbled up just because of technology. Technology has actually made them visible. Those attitudes have been there yeah. for a long, long time. These kids didn't learn their behaviour from watching some dirty movies or something on the internet. They learned this behaviour from their parents. Well, the interesting thing that the judge said, and I thought this was the thing I took away from it, he said silence is, is the worst thing we could do right now. And the fact and that we're even talking about helps it. That. And name suppressions in this country who have name suppression now for kicking in doors and doing quite appalling things to women and excusing it by saying, well, their missus was crazy. And it's, it's disgusting, and you can't do anything about it because name suppression covers everything. We will come back in a moment, Cameron Slater and Josie Pagani on The Huddle. It's coming up 14 to 6. Larry Williams Drive with the new ANZ, the bank that gives you more. It is 12 to 6, back with Josie Pagani and Cameron Slater. Issue number 2, Josie, to you first. Uh, we have the TV3 poll, National down 3.2, Labour up 1.8. Uh, interesting thing is that Labor has made no real traction since Mr Shearer was jettisoned, I, I believe. In fact, uh, Mr Shearer's personal popularity, or should I say Mr Cunliffe's personal popularity, is below that of Mr Shearer. I think uh, looking at it, though, it, it's really a business-as-usual poll, isn't it? It's showing us that nothing much has changed. So uh, Labor is up slightly, but at the expense of the Greens, which I think is a strategic problem for them, um, because if you're cannibalising the Greens, you're not, you're not winning any new votes. Um, but also you've got National where they're in desperate need more than ever of a coalition partner and they're actually running out of options because ACT is clearly gone in this poll. But the interesting thing, I looked at a couple of these outliers uh, that are happening a lot around these polls. One is the Christchurch East uh, by-election, which is coming up. Now, last time National uh, won the party vote, which was astonishing. I mean, they ran a fantastic campaign there and they won it, and Labour lost the party vote. Now it's looking like Labour is, is winning well in that, and their candidate, the national candidate, is hardly present at all. He's kind of phoning it in. His name's Matthew Ducey, and apparently he said that he was interested in why Makariri seat if this that, doesn't work out. So he's now got a nickname. He's Matthew Any Simple hmm. Ducey. What do you see in the uh, latest... Poll, uh, Cameron. I've just got to clarify something on Matthew Ducey there. There's been an article in the press after David Cunliffe's attack on him yesterday where, he, where, where that is just simply a Labour Party rumour that's been going around. But in terms of the polls, I think we, J Josie's right, it's a business as usual that the circuit breaker that was supposed to be David Cunliffe isn't. The circuit breaker policies of somehow saving us all 10 bucks a week on insurance hasn't helped. And you would think that a poll taken the week after your uh, headline conference, you would get a, a bounce in there of something more than, than the margin of error. Just shows that actually the experiment isn't working and that, you know, in fact, this will be confirming Labor's own internal polling, which shows they're back at the share levels. Yeah, but I think you'll probably find that in the regions where uh, the, the, the message about jobs and regional development is actually going to resonate, and I think that you will see some changes, whether it's up in, in you know, Northland or whether it's in Christchurch East, that there is something mm. happening, and it's not being reflected yet in the polls. Well, Labor opposes every aspect of development in the regions. They oppose drilling. They well, that's not true. No, it's true. It is absolutely true. They say one thing out of one side of their mouth I'd like and to another say thing to, to Shane, another audience. I'd like to hear you say that to Shane Jones, who's been advocating for a lot That's of research right, development up in Northland. That's right, by his leadership right. and, and Look, by the party. Just a quick word before you go, Josie. I've uh, got 30 seconds. Uh, Green MP Jan Logie goes to Sri Lanka and she gets detained for three hours. Stunt, in your view? Look, I, yes, a stunt.
stunt, and they're stunt for the right reasons. There's a fine tradition of New Zealand MPs taking positions internationally about human rights. One was Indonesia. I remember seeing MPs from the left and the right um, getting into trouble with the Indonesian government because they were in support of East Timor and freeing East Timor from that invasion. And when it came to that Independence Day in East Timor, those New Zealand MPs stood next to Bill Clinton and Kofi Annan, and they were proud because they'd done something. And Cameron? A complete stunt. Uh, she went up there, lied about her uh, reasons for attending on her visa. It should be no surprise that she, she was uh, detained and then put on a plane and sent out. If you're an MP, you need to follow rules. And if you can't uh, be honest with your intentions about being in a country, then don't go there. You know, if she wants to do PR stunts about human rights, let's see her go to Saudi Arabia and start driving a car around without wearing a burqa and see how she gets on. <laughs> OK. Thank you, Cameron Slater and Josie Pagani on the huddle. Mark Watson with Sport uh, in just a moment. It's 8 to 6.